Are you a mom who needs a break? You've come to the right place. Join me and other moms weekly to hear biblical wisdom and our own journey as mothers. This is Moms on Break. Welcome back to Moms on Break, where we're starting part three of a series with Joshua White called True Education. These are all connected. So moms, please don't um, just listen to this one and not the last one. The last one's very much connected with this one Um, and so forth. So listen to the whole series. They've been powerful. Today's is called Spiritual Development. And this is one of my favorite. Just uh, it's near and dear to my heart and I'm anxious to dive into it. Uh, But before we do, let's read our verse found in Job Chapter 22, verse 21, it says, Acquaint now thyself with him. And this is referring to the Almighty, to God. And be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. I just, I love that. And if you keep reading those verses in Job, it's really encouraging. Um, But acquainting thyself with him. The one who made us. The one who's created everything. The one who's done everything for us is... Oh, it's a passion of mine. Amen. So I'm excited about this one. (laughs) Amen. That's the highest development we can have, being acquainted with God. Yeah, we've been talking about harmonious development as a part of, as a principle of true education. Harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual capacities of the individual. So I want to focus today on that spiritual aspect And arguably, this would be one of the most important areas for the Christian parent to focus on. And I receive the question often, how can I educate my child to be spiritually strong? Mm. That's a great question. So let's discuss five keys to developing spiritual strength. Number one, first of all, and perhaps a bit surprisingly, Mm. to develop spiritual strength, we actually want to focus on physical development, especially in childhood. Hence, going back to the last one, we did that more in depth. Mm -hmm. So because the physical development of a child actually lays a foundation for both mental and spiritual strength later on. Now, we discussed many of the benefits of physical activity in our previous session. And so here, I just want to recognize and emphasize its importance as a foundation for spiritual development. Involve your children in the daily activities of the home inside and out of doors and useful work is incredibly beneficial especially gardening and then beyond the daily duties some aerobic vigorous exercise is great also and then do it all together with them because Mm -hmm. whatever promotes physical health will also promote the development of a strong mind and a well-balanced character so as we develop spiritual strength in our children we must lay a foundation for spiritual development with plenty of physical activity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that we can Absolutely. connect with the Lord spiritually. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yes. So a second key to developing spiritual strength is to spend time with your children. Be- being the example mm-hmm. of who God is and representing the character of God to them. Now that's a bit of a mouthful. Let me explain a little more. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, and we find a beautiful principle of true education here. These words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Mm -hmm. So here, parents are instructed that God's word needs to find a place in their heart, which of course, that means it changes them. It's applied to their life. It becomes who they are. So God's words, his commands, and his instructions need to be in the heart of the parent. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the Bible says that the parents are to teach these words diligently to their children and in a specific method. It says sitting in your house, walking by the way, lying down and rising up. In other words, all the time and through everyday life. This is, <laughs> this is not a class that we're reading about here. This is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. God is telling parents, put my words in your heart and then spend time with your children. Become the example of who God is and then spend time together. I just want to emphasize the put it in our hearts first as parents. I mean, how can we give anything to them unless it's not first with us? Right, right. So important. So critical. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. This is actually well supported by scientific research. Listen to this here from an article in the journal Child Development. 
quote, the quality of the parent-child relationship is an important moderator of the impact of parent-child discourse involving moral themes. So when the parent has a good relationship with the child, which is built, of course, primarily by spending time together, the child will be more receptive to the parent's instruction. Mm. And I can't stress this enough. An individual's understanding of who God is and how they develop a relationship with God is very influenced by the example of their parents and the relationship they had with their parents. And that's a very solemn responsibility it when is. you think about it. It is. And, that, and it requires time. Absolutely. And a lot of it and all day. A lot of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. A third key to developing spiritual strength is to spend a lot of time in nature. Mm. Nature is called God's second book, although, of course, chronologically, that would be the first book given to mankind is because Adam and Eve were given nature to teach them about God even before the Bible was written. Mm -hmm. They had that personal walk with God. Absolutely, yeah. They just walked with him. Incredible, incredible. Mm. But it is still a lesson book for us today. Yes, oh, yes. And I do want to clarify, because sometimes when we talk about learning from nature, we think about getting a book out about animals or trees or something like that. <laughs> but we don't need to go to a book to learn about nature. No. Simply spending time in nature. That's of great benefit to young and old alike. That book should um, inspire you to get out in nature. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, think about it. God did not give Adam and Eve a book or a class about nature. He just put them in nature. Nature was the book. Mm-hmm. And I love what the Bible tells us in Job chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. It says, but ask now the beasts and they shall teach thee mm. and the fowls of the air and they shall tell thee or speak to the earth and it shall teach thee and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. So to simply spend time in nature is to learn of the creator from this wonderful lesson book. Amen. And, and that's endless. It is. It is absolutely endless. Yes. Very good point. And I love what we read here from the book Education. To the little child, not yet capable of learning from the printed page or of being introduced to the routine of the schoolroom, nature presents an unfailing source of instruction and delight. The heart, not yet hardened by contact with evil, is quick to recognize the presence that pervades all created things. The ear, as yet undulled by the world's clamor, is attentive to the voice that speaks through nature's utterances. So far as possible, let the child from his earliest years be placed where this wonderful lesson book shall be opened before him. Let him behold the glorious scenes painted by the great master artist upon the shifting canvas of the heavens. Mm. Let him become acquainted with the wonders of earth and sea. Let him watch the unfolding mysteries of the changing seasons and in his works, God's works, (laughs) learn of the creator. In no other way can the foundation of a true education be so firmly and surely laid. Wow, that's powerful. It is. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, a fourth aspect in developing spiritual strength. This is the one we commonly think of, Mm -hmm. Bible study. Mm -hmm. But it's important that we cover the first three points. We need to lay that foundation with plenty of physical activity. We need to set that example and develop a good relationship. And we need to be spending time in nature. But then as we're doing these things, now we can incorporate the Bible study. Amen. Yeah, because then we're ready to be able to soak this up. Right. Uh huh. And, and the nature, it does point us to God. I mean, that is, you know, showing his Amen. works. And Amen. so all of these are important. Yeah. Now, don't be in a hurry, though, <laughs> to run and get a bi- set of Bible lessons and have your child go through them. Mm-hmm. That first type of biblical instruction that we give to our children should be oral instruction. So in the first seven or eight years mm-hmm. of life, the parents should be teaching the Bible to their child through oral instruction rather than just reading it to them or even having the child read. Mm -hmm. Children can learn a lot about the Bible and be very grounded in biblical truth through oral instruction in everyday life. So tell them the Bible stories, draw lessons from them, teach them the key points of doctrine, the supporting text, things like that. Biblical truth learned in this context of an emotional connection Mm -hmm. formed by this, you know, this parent child conversation, this will stick as we say, it'll stick in the mind Mm. a lot more securely than just reading. Yeah. When you think of um, just the Genesis stories being passed down, 
just teach them to, to tell them, tell them about it. Yeah, Amen. that's what I think. Very of. good point. Mm-hmm. And modern scientific research is very much supporting this. This is, um, I'll read something here from a neuroscience article written by Professor Joe Frost. Live language in a warm emotional context with a caring adult boosts language development. Information received in an emotional context is more powerful in stimulating neural development than information alone. So Mm. just remember that power of just being with your child and telling them the stories and lessons from the Bible. And then later, as you get to the actual printed page, be sure to study together with your child. Open those books together, read to them, talk about it, apply what is learned in the life. Many times we approach education just from the standpoint of the teacher or the expert in instructing the pupil. But true education can be a fun experience of learning together. Amen. And if you're passionate about, passionate about it as a parent, that will rub off. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Very good point. And I love how the book Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students puts it here. Speaking of the attitude of the teacher or the parent in the study of God's word, it says, I will no longer stand so far above you. Let us climb together and we will see what can be gained by a united study of the scriptures. Christ is the one who imparts all knowledge. Let us work together in an earnest effort to learn from God how to understand the truths of his word and how to place these truths before others in their beauty and simplicity. Let us study together. The Bible is your guidebook and my guidebook. By asking questions, you may suggest ideas that are new to me. The, the teacher is telling you, the, the parent is telling the child that. Mm. Various ways of expressing the truth we are studying will bring light into our class. Light will shine upon us as in the meekness and lowliness of Christ we study together. Mm-hmm. So Bible study and teaching should be a fundamental part of every day, a part of the curriculum, if you, if you will. Mm -hmm. And of course, that includes obeying the truths of the Bible and applying them to the life, the application of what is studied. And, you know, and as you mentioned, Stacey, the parents need to love this too. So there is that element of example there. Mm -hmm. It comes across and they they want it too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And our fifth and final aspect of spiritual strength would be prayer. Prayer is an essential part of character transformation. Amen. Mm -hmm. We should be praying with our children every day, uh, praying for them, of course. I'm sure all parents are doing that. And then, of course, teaching them how to pray. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think there should be a certain time every day that's dedicated to prayer. And then in addition to that, just a spirit of prayer in the home. Mm -hmm. Parents need to recognize constantly their need of divine help. We should teach our children to go to the Lord for every need and trial of life through our own example, of course, and through instruction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I just, I love the prayer part. I mean, it's my lifeline throughout the day. Sometimes I can't always be on my knees, Mm -hmm. but I'll just be talking to the Lord, asking him for help for different things. But with my kids, um, for correction, you know, Mm -hmm. I love to point them to first John one nine. Mm -hmm. And if we confess our sins, we need need to tell him we're sorry for what we've done. And then he will forgive. And, and I'm going to let you do that right now. He wants us to bring them to that prayer time, confession and, and just help. And when they start their day, when they go to bed at night, you can talk to Jesus, tell about your day, you know, (laughs) just encouraging that attitude of prayer. That's great. Amen. So I hope we've seen here that, you know, spiritual development means so much more than just having our children read the Bible. It is about true education in general. It's a lifestyle. It encompasses all areas of our life and requires constant focus and attention Mm -hmm. on the part of the parent. The Lord will give strength and guidance to the earnest parent in this work. Mm -hmm. And again, just want to point you to our website, athinkinggeneration.org. There's lots of helpful information on there, blog articles, Mm -hmm. and uh, to continue learning more about this topic. Uh Uh-huh. The take-home point, moms, parents, grandparents, is let it start with us. Amen. Let us start a relationship with the Lord daily, hourly, minute by minute, um, and that will rub off. Absolutely. Thank you, Stacey. Okay, until next time. You can find Moms on Break on Facebook, Instagram, and your favorite podcast service. Subscribe, like, and comment to be a part of all our mom talk. 
Moms on Break is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries.